What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic and I just wanted to do a quick video today about the most common excuse that people use for not building a home theater. So whenever I talk to people about projectors or home theater setups, the most common excuse I get is that my room is too small. Well, out of the five friends and family members who I've helped build home theaters, three of them gave me this excuse. So today we're not only gonna debunk that myth, but I also wanted to tell you the things to look out for if you're building a home theater in a small room. So before you buy a projector, the first thing you have to consider is screen size. Not only do you need to make sure the projector can project as big as you want, but there are a few other things you need to consider as well. So in the two smallest rooms I've set up, the owners wanted to go with something like a 90 inch screen, but once we projected on the wall, they ended up going with the screen size between 100 and 115 inches. Now this is fine, but in a small room, you have to consider throw distance since this will limit the screen size if you're using a long throw projector in a small room. And if you don't know, throw is how far the projector needs to be from the screen to produce a certain size image. So there are long throw, short throw, and ultra short throw projectors. And long throw projectors are usually the least expensive option, so they're the most popular. And the easiest way to figure out the throw distance needed for a particular projector is to use the projection calculator on projectorcentral.com. This will not only tell you exactly how far the projector needs to be away from the wall, but it will also give you some estimates on the screen dimensions as well as the projection offset, which I'll talk about in a second. So once you find a projector that works for your room, it's time to do some calculations to make sure the screen will fit. So when it comes to measurements, the first thing you need to do is measure the length, width, and height of your room. And once you have those measurements, you can hop on over to the projection calculator. So for example, here I'm gonna be using the BenQ TK700 STI. So in order to figure out the biggest screen size we can get from this projector in our room, the first thing we need to do is slide the zoom range slider to the widest angle. Then we're gonna set the throw distance to about two feet less than the entire length of our room. This is gonna give the projector some breathing room and ensure that we have enough room to plug in cables in the back of the projector. So as you can see here, the biggest screen size we can get from this projector would be around 123 inches, or maybe a little bigger if we were able to move the projector back a little bit more. The next important thing we need to consider is the screen dimensions and vertical offset. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that people make is forgetting that they need to leave some space under the screen for a TV stand if they plan to use one, or they underestimate how low their ceilings are. Now I did talk about this a bit in the projector setup video that I did a few years ago, so make sure you go ahead and check out that video. But if you're gonna ceiling mount your projector, you have to consider the vertical offset. So let's say we drop the screen size down to 120 inches. So we can see that with a screen size of 120 inches, this projector has a vertical offset of about six inches. This means that the screen will need to be at least six inches below the projector lens if it's mounted on the ceiling. Now to be fair, you could tilt the projector upwards and use keystone adjustments to avoid moving the screen down, but I don't recommend this since it affects the sharpness of the image. So what about ultra short throw projectors? Well, even though these do make the installation a lot easier, the thing to keep in mind with these is that they sometimes have a high projection offset. So for example, let's use the Vava 4K ultra short throw projector. So if we use the projection calculator and we go with the same 120 inch screen, we can see that the Vava has a projection offset of about 13 inches. This means that the bottom of the screen needs to be at least 13 inches above the top of the projector. This may not seem like a big deal, but if your ceilings are eight feet tall and you wanted a 120 inch screen, then your TV stand would have to be pretty short. And the Vava also needs to be about two feet away from the screen, so even though it is an ultra short throw, it still requires a fairly deep stand, or you would have to pull the stand farther away from the wall. All right, so we talked about screen size and measurements, but what about seating distance versus screen size? Well, I found that some people have a tendency to get hung up on seating distance, but I usually tell people not to worry about this. I personally found that the recommended seating positions are too far away from my personal taste and often defeat the purpose of having a big screen. So once you have your projector, it's best to temporarily project onto a wall, then sit in your seat and see how you feel about the screen size. I found that most people usually go bigger than the recommendations. All right, so now we're gonna talk about speakers. So when it comes to setting up home theater speakers in a small room, you have two options. One option is to do in-wall speakers, which is obviously gonna help you save on some floor space, 
or you can do floor standing speakers. So if your floor speakers are tall, then you'll need to make sure you have enough space on the sides of your screen for the speakers, since if you put them in front of the screen, they're probably gonna block it. But one mistake that a lot of people make is placing their front speakers too close to the side walls. Having your speakers too close to the wall can affect speaker dispersion and cause a negative effect on sound quality. Now, one thing you can do to help with this is tilt your front speakers inward, which does help. Now, center channel speaker placement isn't as important, but in theory, you obviously want the center channel to be in the center of the screen, but also as close to the screen as possible. And if the center speaker is positioned really low, then it's best to use a wedge or mount it at an angle towards your ears. Now, the most challenging issue in small rooms is surround speakers. Now, you have a few options here, but I found that the most popular option is to place the speakers slightly behind your seat, if possible, and aim them towards each other. And if you don't have the space to put your rear speakers on stands, you can either put them in the ceiling or you could use mounts to place them higher and aim them towards the seating position. And when it comes to subwoofers in small rooms, you're often forced to put the subs wherever they fit. Now, considering a single subwoofer might not be in the best spot in a small room, I usually recommend at least two subs to balance things out. Now, if you're unable to do two subs, then it's not the end of the world since you're likely to still hear a single sub in such a small room. So once you have all your speakers in place, it's best to add some sound deadening to your room to help with reflections. So small rooms are notorious for reflecting a lot of sound, which makes your speakers sound less distinct or discreet. Now carpet does help with this a little bit, but adding some sound absorption pads to your walls is really effective. With no sound absorption, it'll be hard to tell which direction certain sounds are coming from. So this is definitely something you wanna add to your room, especially if it's small. And finally, once you're done with all your sound deadening, it's best to run room correction to ensure that you get the best quality sound. Room correction is really important for small rooms since it'll ensure that the distances and volume levels are set correctly, especially if you have a lot of reflections around the room. And once you're done with the room correction, your home theater is all set and ready to go. So long story short, your room is probably not too small for a home theater. Now you might have to go with a smaller screen or different types of projectors or speakers, but you can almost always make it work with the right calculations. I do hope that this video helped you out and gave some of the people with smaller rooms a bit of confidence to get started on their setup. If you did find this video helpful, go ahead and make sure you mash that like button for me. And I do want you to leave your questions and comments in the comment section so I can respond to your questions. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any new videos. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.